Let's have a round of applause for Michael. Well, thank you. Um, thank you for having me here uh, as a kind of an alien. I'm, I'm from Germany, so we're not located here in the Valley or in San Francisco with our startup. So a bit about my person. Of course, I was born, I'm 42 years old. Um, I, I worked for, from 1994 in the internet business, built one of the first 1,000 web servers. Yeah, okay, um, I should take that, that micro. So built uh, one of the first uh, 1,000 web servers worldwide. Uh, then I co-founded a fintech startup in 2001, uh, which was acquired by, uh, by an investment bank here in the United States. Um, uh, founded a vacation rental instant bookable platform, which was uh, acquired by HRS in 2014. And nine months ago, I founded a new company, Geos, um, that is us. We're 12 people currently. We work in Bavaria in Munich, so um, this is how we work normally. And um, what we do is we build a B2B platform um, connecting travelers while they're in their destination, while they're traveling. Um, I don't want to talk too much. Um, I want to think um, people, the, the, the people changed. Um, a lot of them kind of live a liquid lifestyle. You have access to everything. So you want a car, you get an Uber. You have, uh, while you're at home, you know where to go. You know where you go, uh, what to do, what to eat. Uh, you have access, you can buy. You have your smartphone, you're connected. And um, you want those liquid experience even when you're traveling. So when you're going in on vacation, you want to take this with you. You want the same kind of access. And you want just to create more memories. You don't want to think about technology or using technology. Um, the best job is if the traveler is not touching technology, that he's just touching the experience. So I want to talk about the connected destination. Um, wouldn't it be great, sorry this is hand drawn from me on, on my, I have my tablet, uh, on, on my touchpad. Um, so you, you check in, so you have a lot of touch points while in your vacation, you check in the, the, the accommodation you booked, you enter the Wi-Fi, wouldn't it be just great that if all the Wi-Fi hotspots in the same city or in the same area would be connected with this? Um, you go for a drink in the bar, the next day you go in the skiing area, you, you go for dinner uh, or for lunch up there on, on the mountain hut, and you return, you take a rented car or a shared car uh, in front of your house, you go to a museum, you get the parking ticket, um, you, you go in the museum or in the, the, the yeah, theater or something like this, you go shopping around, and then the next day you take a bike, a rented bike, um, and go, for example, for a lake cruise. And then in the evening, you take the bus, go to the city, go to an event. You have all those touch points. And wouldn't it be just great if you have them all connected together? So what things are we talking about? Um, that is, of course, the room key. So you open up your, your door of the hotel or of the accommodation you booked and all the connected things in the hotel room. Um, you have the public transportation. You have... Um, shared cars, a lot of destinations in Europe, they bring shared cars, they put it there and you can use it for two hours a day, you can use, it for, use them for free. Um, rented bikes, e-bikes, they're just there, they are provided by the public tourism. Um, the parking meters, you go there, park, and just can use your device or your car to, 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 to get the ticket. Um, of course, the, the attractions, the point of interest, the ski destinations, you just go there, drive up the mountain, have a nice day, um, point of sales, restaurants, stores, um, digital signage, which is out there, which gives you local information. Um, for all these things where you interact, the NFC is a standard. That's quite good. But NFC is just physics, frequency, initialization, collision detection, protocol, and things like that. And there are a lot of other systems connected in the destination which you don't actively engage, like they have cameras there to, to detect waiting crowds. Um, they have guidance systems where is parking space available. Um, you have public Wi-Fi's. They, they put it in, in the lanterns in the street or in this area, uh, in, in a ski area. They just put it, install it really in the, the lift uh, holes. And you have weather sensors, lighting detection sensors, very local information spots which generate a lot of data. And sadly, the interfaces you have NFC, physical, but the interfaces to talk to all those things, they are not normalized. So you have, welcome to the API hell. You have tons of, of things like, like RESTful, you have SOAP, you have XML, you have R, XML RPC, you have flat file things, fixed length, 
CSV, and a lot of legacy stuff. And I think there will be no standards. Um, it's, it's hard to say. I, for the past 17 years, I've been working on several startups. We were connecting with financial partners, with vacation rental partners. There will be no standards because you have legacy systems. One example, if you want to issue a ticket for a ski area, you need from the ski area provider, like Ski Data, you need some SAM module, which does the encryption. And if you want to put this, so every terminal wants to issue, who issues such a ski ticket, needs a small, it's a SIM-like card you put in, does the encryption and writes it on the NFC card. And what we're currently doing is we, we take out those, those things we put in, in our data center, a, a rack module, which holds, let's say, 64 of those modules, and then you can connect them with an API, for example. Um, you have politics, local politics. Um, a lot of, lot of destinations would never use a technology because it was invented in the neighbor country or in the neighbor state or even the neighbor city. You have the, in, in Europe, a very strong not invented here syndrome. The people just don't use stuff because it is, it's not invented here, sorry. <laughs> and um, so my tip is build just an architecture which makes it happen that you can easily connect and maintain those APIs. You, you're, you, you come in, you will then come out of the API hell, but, but will end up maybe in regression hell because one API changes, something breaks, another API changes, something other breaks. So you have to build a good architecture, a good team, a good monitoring, a good testing about this. There are other obstacles in the destination which makes it hard to connect the traveler. Um, flow frequency. If you, for example, in the ski areas, you need a lot of people coming in in the morning and, for example, letting them taking out a phone, launching an app, pressing a button is too slow. It won't work. It won't work for the frequency you need to get the people in there. Um, network coverage, even in the non-hotspot areas where you want to live outside, where you want to go hiking, you have no network coverage. And it's even worse for us German, uh, Germans coming here, we have no data coverage. We sometimes have network, but we have to pay 90 bucks a month to, to, to get a, a, a megabyte of data or something like this. So it's really crazy. And power supply, you, I mean, yeah, you can, can install power supplies in the whole national park. You can, <laughs> can do it with, with solar panels, but it's still there's some basic problems when you're coming outside the big urban areas. Um, we analyzed what should we base a system on. Should we do it on a passive NFC card or should we base it on a smartphone variable device? And um, we came up to, to use a passive card because it's cheap. 100% of the travelers can get one. I mean, if you have a family with four people, you maybe have one or two smartphones, but not, not four smartphones. And you can do branding, souvenir thing on the card. You can, um, you have no energy, no, no drained power thing that, oh, I want to, oh, sadly my, my, my battery died and I can't open the door to my hotel room or something like this. You have no installs needed. A lot of people have a phone, but they don't know how to install an app. They, they forgot their, their iOS password or their Google Play account they haven't activated. Um, you can also engage on those plastic cards. You can, can put magnetic strips on for the old locks in, in the older hotel rooms. And um, this, this is something where we came up and, and uh, on the, the smartphone variable, they are not just yet broadly used by the people. And well, another thing for RFID, Apple, they, they're just not giving us the potential to, to use the NFC API. So um, they say, okay, if you want to do near field communication, use Bluetooth LE, we don't open up our RFID or NFC part. Sadly, so this would also limit it down to the Android phones. So why are we doing this or why is this Instead of that, the traveler has a more liquid experience. What, what else is in there? So um, one more thing for the traveler could be something like a coming home. So uh, I thought saw this in the former or, or two, two um, presentations ago. Um, when you enter your room, you have your room temperature set. You have the light color set. You find your Netflix login in the TV. You can just continue looking something you did. You have your air temperature. The hotel can provide you the snacks you want or the mini bar. Or if you're a gin tonic guy, you get gin tonic in the room. Or if you, <laughs> you're more a vodka a guy, you get the vodka there. Um, secondly, which is more the B2B thing, is the traveler flow. I mean, every one of us thinks we're so special. I travel where nobody traveled before, but mainly it's, it's Androids. 90% of the travelers 
do the beaten stuff, do the, uh, use the same trails. And retail, for example, this IKEA example, they do it for years. They track where the people are, where, where they flow in the store, where they go, the A-B test layout of the stores to, to get the conversion right to sell their, their products. And um, the telecommunication providers do it also. They check where the people move while they're with their smartphones available. And when you look, for example, in a city, this is a German area, it's, it's Kiel, it's a, it's a smaller city in, in Germany, northern Germany. And you look where the cars are going. This is data from Google. So you see exactly where the traffic is happening. And our data, we run into our data, what, what you gathered from travelers, and we got something like this. And if you stitch them together, you see completely different behaviors. You see the travelers are moving on complete different trails and tracks than the cars are moving. So it is much more important for the destination if they, they want to give a good experience to the travelers that they good, uh, give this good area and in those areas where the people are that they good, uh, create good experiences there. It goes further. You can do traveler flow management and personalization. Um, so you have all those connection, all those digital connection points in the destination. And then you create something like this. Um, this is a, a family traveling. You have uh, the demographic data of the people. And then you see when they touch your platform, the, the, either the app or mobile web experience. Then you see when they check in in the hotel, when they touch one of the point of interest, because they use their card to go in. You see, you get those signals back. And you get, for example, when they log in in the public Wi-Fi hotspots, you get those logins and also the sessions and what they have searched for. Um, if you take this data and create kind of, we call it a trip print, to say we use this demographic data, we take the weather in, um, we take this in-destination data, we know what kind of accommodation he stayed at, was it a three-star hotel, a five-star hotel, was it a vacation rental? So you know kind of the budget of the trip, um, you see if he's given some recommendations or uh, did some shares on, on social media. You take this and use this for the traveler and the different travel contexts he is or she is. Um, so you see sometimes the same person traveling in different contexts, uh, in different destinations like a uh, single trip uh, to, to, in this case, Switzerland, uh, a couple trip to Norway uh, on, and Italy and the family trips in to USA and to Germany. And when you have this universe of travelers with all those trip prints, you can easily match travelers. You can see are there similar travelers in the destination which have a similar footprint in the same, let's say, time of, of travel with the same, uh, it's a family with young children in May, and uh, they, they spend a, a vacation in a three-star hotel, and then you can match and can give very personalized tips and su suggestions to the travelers. And this is something which really helps to get the traveler while he's in the destination to give him a good, good um, recommendation and to give him tips uh, in the morning, I mean, we have a function that uh, you can print out that as a, as a file and put it on the breakfast table. The breakfast moment is one of the most important moments where the decision is happening what, what the people do today. And you can do this as a hotel, one click, and you have it branded in your hotel. You just get the tips for the day based on weather and even personalized maybe on who is traveling. Um, the fourth is more a B2B. A thing, this is the service design. It's called service design. It's not a technical thing. It's more like the destination thinks, what kind of products do we have to give to our people while they're in the destination? Um, they get a lot of analytics on the demographics, so they can decide, do we think for more for elderly people? Do we think for younger people, for families? Do we have to put up a bench somewhere because there's, there's a lot of traffic in the summer, but, but there's not, no place to sit and things like that? So you can optimize the destination and the experience. Um, I will have two, two more examples in the wild who is doing this. One is Disney. Um, they invested one, one billion US dollar in the past 20 years to build up a system. You, you, they show these beautiful images like ah, a father holding hand with her boy or daughter and walking around with those nice, nice wrists. And, and you can go there, fast pass, can enter everything, can open the room, can buy things, can, can just go there. It's, it's, it's beautiful. When you look at those devices, if you, if you cut them up, you see there's a lot of electronics in there. Um, they run three concurrent systems in there. 
uh, which is uh, uh, RFID, which works for all the guests because it's also in the, the day ticket. They have the UHF RFID, which is something you, you know from the Walmart gateways, um, when you steal things that goes uh, <laughs> where the alarm goes off. And they have uh, an active system pinging once a minute to say, wait, they can triangulate you and see where you are. And they use this for lower frustration. So if they see there's a big crowd, a big waiting line, they can send Donald in to cheer up, Donald Duck in that case. And they, they can, um, and, and what they learned is if you abstract the people from money, they spend more. So they had a 8% per capita increase with people using the spend instead of taking the credit card out. It's, it's super nice, they, they, it's easy upsell. The second one is the system we are building. It's live in several destinations in Germany right now. Um, we built a physical device which is installed at the host. Um, it's, it's an NFC writer um, with an MCU and, and power over ethernet or power over USB. Um, and there's the embedded part of the software you're having in. So it's a data store and, and an MQTT protocol based, based uh, standard we're using to talk to our servers. And um, we built a transaction lay on top of the, F of the MQTT, MQTT because it's not transactional. So you have to take care that you have the transaction and the context. Um, we have those physical NFC cards um, uh, with two chips and two antennas with two standards. You need these two standards for the different different uh, vendors or the different areas. Uh, the ski areas have a different RFID standard than the, the for example, door locks or things like that. And this is uh, the physical design of the, the plastic card. So you have two chips, two antennas. It's just when you put tear them away how it looks. And uh, the file system on card is also straightforward. We have some reserved space. We have some flexible space for use. We have uh, for the public transportation systems a flex and the shared space, and also for the ski ski areas um, uh, some some uh, space there on this card. Uh, next year we'll have 8,500 terminals in different accommodations. So hotels, vacation rentals. There will be 8,500 terminals up front running and uh, 600,000 cards issued for the destinations which enable up to 500,000 concurrent travelers using those cards on a day-to-day -day base. Um, we made some prototype on the hardware. One warning, don't do hardware. Never, never, ever do hardware. It's, 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 you have reliability, you have the FFC, FEC certifications, you have, if you do mass production, you have to, to write verification software for this. Don't do it, use a partner. Um, they, they, there's a lot of partners around who do this exactly for five or 10 years, so just use them. Um, you can get creative on the housing, so build a beautiful design, let it mold, and, and, and uh, just uh, do the packaging, but don't do the hardware. Um, what the destinations have from this, they have kind of those dashboards where they see people arriving, comparison with, with the prior month, with the prior, prior year, uh, what was the weather, what kind of travelers were arriving, or the flowcharts like this to say, where were the traveler um, staying and where were they in the daytime? So they can see if a chat shuttle is there or if there's something uh, uh, valuable for, for bringing people from A to B. Um, they make additional revenue with this. So we have built a business model around that technology for them, which helps them that they create memory from all the travelers they're currently not touching. Um, they see a big growth in utilization for the service providers. For example, in summer, a few people just go up the mountain. It's quite of pricey to, to, to do it. Um, we have uh, like, like a business model which, which uh, gives an kind of all-inclusive um, for, for, the, for the guest that he can go up there for free and it's, 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 it's managed the cash flow. And, um, so, and they see 15% growth in overnights of the accommodations offering this service to the guests. So this is additional value. A, a hotel owner or a vacation rental provider can give to their guests. So it's, it's something new and the people like it because they get free stuff they can do around. What is next? Um, you, you all know the zombies people, we got addicted to, to our smartphones. Everyone, I heard 80% of the teens take the smartphone in the bed, not, not close to the bed, in the bed at night. And um, when, when you think on what, what wearables are and, and how the people get addicted to robotics, so maybe the next thing is biohacking. I mean, you can, could buy this right now. You can get 99 bucks. You can inject yourself an RFID chip in the hand or something like this. It's, it's quite crazy. So, so the Internet of Things might then move later on to, to kind of the Internet of Humans. And this is basically it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>
you have any questions, raise your hand. Uh, so one of the big things in business travel is what they call uh, uh, duty of care, uh, keeping track of uh, uh, business travelers. Is this a technology that, that can be used for that as well? Um, it could be. Um, uh, we're currently more focusing on the, the non-city areas, where the, 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 non, the more the non-urban areas. But it could be. I mean, you could create also a system. I mean, the, the lock systems in, in the chain hotels are the same technology. And um, you could also offer a white label. For example, you could create a Hilton card based on this, which would work uh, on all the Hilton hotels or something like this. Um, yeah. We are travel management companies can can track travelers according to where they fly and where they sleep. But I'm yeah. talking about you know where they eat, where they go for a walk, where they have business meetings. I mean, we provide a service for them. Uh, when you see when the guest is searching something or is booking something, um, then of course you have those signals too. Um, and uh, then you have to see if you can connect to some local providers or POS systems in in the area where you get the data from. So we do a destination-based approach, so not to say we issue this for the whole world, we, we select the destinations and then build the interfaces there, roll out the product, and then destination per destination. Other questions? Um, do you have an example of uh, multiple vendors kind of along the process all being on the same software or the same um, program, you know, from the, um, from the, you know, driver to the tour operator to the hotel, that they're all on the same system tracking the same traveler? Um, we, no, we don't have. We currently come in place after the booking's done, so we give this to the hotel currently. Um, so so um, the flight and transfer to the hotel is not, not in this. Of course, uh, in, in the surface we have, there's also some information before the trip happening, um, but, but then the, the card or the physical device is then given to the guest at the check-in. Um, and uh, of course you can have the signals up front to see what he was looking for, what he was planning, what he was maybe interested, or if he ordered some, some additional stuff in the, in the accommodation before he went there. Um, but not the, the tracking or where he came from or where he stopped or something like this. But for example, if you have a, a transfer company which is giving you the data, uh, they said we transferred from A to B with this driver and, and uh, this duration, we could also integrate it and, and then it would be in the funnel to say, okay, we have this flight, you can, can get the flight times, we are the flight number, could integrate this. So, so then you would have the people arrived with this flight, took a 20 minute transfer to this with this company and even this particular driver if they maintain it and then the hotel till the checkout. Anybody else have questions? Great, thank you very much. Thank you. Let's have a round of applause for Michael.